Picture views from television news. You'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. Howdy. Welcome to the beginning of the fifth year of 9-11 was an inside job. Well, as you see behind me, go ahead and take me out. There, we have a special event coming up. It's Richard Gage is coming to Portland. He's coming to Portland Community Media. Go ahead and take me out so they can read the sign. Anyway, yeah, there you go. Uh, he's the founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. And he's going to be doing a, a, a short presentation. He'll be here in Studio B. We'll have live call-in. So uh, you'll actually be able to call in and talk to Richard Gage, the founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. There's something over 1,700 professionals signed on to the petition to demand a new 9-11 investigation. And uh, these engineers are putting their careers on the line. You know, the third rail in politics, they say, is, you know, 9-11. Well, the same thing in business. And Richard Gage has made lots of personal sacrifices and, uh, you know, dedicated himself to finding and delivering the truth to people. Well, you're going to see uh, in another special event just before that, um, he's going to appear or actually be interviewed on KPOJ, at 3.30, that's AM 6.20, at 3.30 the same day, February 18th. So 3.30 to 4.30, he'll be on KPOJ, then he jumps in a car and comes over to Portland Community Media, and we have a, a short presentation followed by live call-in, Q&A. If you want to talk to Richard Gage in person, be sure to watch this show. We'll announce it again before we go. Now, um, okay, I have to apologize to the caller on, on, at the end of last season in December. We did that Homeland Security uh, kind of fake takeover. Well, it was because of the impending, you know, putting into law. Obama was about to sign NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, into law. And we were dreading it, and that was to emphasize what could happen. And, well, anyway... Obviously, December 31st, in a sneak signature attack, <laughs> Obama signed it into law uh, on the night when it would get the least coverage. And I watched the national news. They never did really mention it. Uh, I watched ABC, NBC, all of them. You know, and later on, people started being interviewed about it being done, but there was never any real news story about it in the official full media and press news. Uh, and even Democracy Now!, I expected them to, to give it an honorable mention, at least. You know, well, they didn't really do a full-blown show until the 12th, which was almost two weeks later. Well, here I am, two weeks later. I was going to, I have a little clip here to run. Alex Jones gets to say I told you so a few times. He probably deserves it after all the vilifying he has to put up with uh, about his own name. But I'm going to go ahead and, and start this Alex Jones clip. Are you guys ready in there? I'll take that for a yes. Okay, here we go. Oh, you say, wait a minute. Oh, okay, here we go. This is Alex Jones, and it's about 15, let's see, 14 minutes and 25 seconds before we come back. Provisions, would it be possible that an American citizen then could be declared an enemy combatant and sent to Guantanamo Bay and detained indefinitely? They said it couldn't happen here. The administration asked us to remove the language which says that U.S. citizens and lawful residents would not be subject to this section. There would never be troops on the streets of America. There would always be due process. And when they say, I want my lawyer, you tell them, shut up. Your time is expired. Get a lawyer. You're an enemy combatant. It was the conspiracy theorists that warned that there was a plan to overthrow our republic and use the military against the people, that FEMA camps had been built, that citizens could be secretly arrested and disappeared. I want that person to be terrified 
about what's going to happen to them in American custody. And I now NDAA 2012 is law. It did happen here. Please know what will come your way. Death, detention, prosecution. It's illegitimate. It's a fraud. It's tyranny in your face. The only question is, will the people of the United States let this tyranny now be put into action? It's one thing to pass an unconstitutional law. It's another thing to actually implement it. The globalists have bitten off more than they can chew. The Republic is rising, and the spirit of 1776 flies proudly on our banners. It's time for everybody out there watching to have a gut check and to decide what side are you on. Do you stand with our constitutional republic? Or do you stand with the corrupt politicians that have been bought and sold a hundred times by offshore megabanks that are conquering this country through fraud? The reason the National Defense Authorization Act was rammed through Congress and the reason President Obama treacherously and traitorously signed it is because the power structure, the ruling class, is scared of the people. They know that we're waking up to the private Federal Reserve banking cartel. They know that we're waking up to secret arrest and torture. They know that we know that offshore banks have taken over this country through fraud and signed us on to over a thousand trillion dollars of fraudulent garbage derivatives paper. They know the Ponzi scheme is coming down. And so they ram through the NDAA. And Obama said that he was going to veto it so that he wouldn't take the political pressure. Then he signed it in the final hours of 2011 when he thought everybody wasn't paying attention and was partying on New Year's Eve. And he did that because crimes are committed in the dark. They don't want their open tyranny to be a wake-up call to people. They want to silently have our republic go into that long night. They want to stab this country in the back when nobody's watching. There's a problem, I'm watching, Ron Paul's watching, you're watching, and we're involved. And like Paul Revere before us, we are warning people worldwide. Just look at the NDAA and its passage, all the lies. Oh, at first it didn't affect citizens, now they admit it does. A global declaration of war against all countries. Congress handing that power to the president, making him a dictator. Secret arrest of citizens, torture, indefinite detention. Then the senators came out who authored it and said, you bet it affects citizens. We want you to be scared. And he went further and said, don't criticize us. Obama demanded this be in the legislation. The ACLU and others went to Obama and said, did you really do this? And they said, yes. That's how bad this deception has gotten, where they want to have their tyrannical cake and eat it too. But why are they hiding the fact that it affects citizens? Why are they hiding the fact that Obama signed it because they want to do their crimes secretly, because they know what they're doing is wrong. And they want to now implement this draconian classical tyranny behind the scenes ahead of the next staged event, the next false flag, the next big war. They want to roll this out with test cases, with unsavory types of people like Anwar Al-Awlaki, a U.S. citizen they claim that they killed extrajudicially so that they can sell the public on the idea of people disappearing into black holes. That's why it's so important now more than ever to get the truth about this Defense Authorization Act to everyone you know. In my 17 years on air, I have never seen an issue shake people out of their sleep, out of their social trance like this has done. The apologies via email and comments on our websites are coming in by the thousands. Radio talk show hosts are apologizing. Congressional aides are calling me and apologizing because everything that we warned the public about is now unfolding. Not just the establishment of military operations domestically. Not just secret arrest and torture. Not just new wars. But the warrantless wiretapping, the, the TSA checkpoints on the highways, it's all happening. And the system wouldn't have rammed this legislation through and exposed their despotic game plan if they weren't accelerating their timetable. War with Iran, economic collapse by design, it's all coming. 
But at this critical juncture, when the globalists are uncloaking themselves, they are extremely weak because now they are naked in front of us. They are brazenly there proving to everyone that they are criminals. It is treason to overthrow the Constitution and Bill of Rights. They passed legislation before saying black people weren't humans. They could pass legislation uh, saying that uh, white people are slaves or something. It doesn't make it so. All laws that are repugnant and unconstitutional are null and void. Marbury versus Madison and thousands of other rulings. Tyrants take over by degree. And the system is simply testing the public now to see if they can get away with this legislation first and then to see piecemeal if they can get away with it incrementally. They're not gonna come snatch you out of your house overnight. They're not gonna activate the now public FEMA camps overnight. They're going to sell it as something that they're rolling out to save and safeguard society. They're going to script every facet of it. And that's why we've gotta be there at every point, confronting them, pointing out their fraud, pointing out the true history and decrying what they're doing, just like our ancestors, Paul Revere and our founding fathers did. So I am upset that they did pass the NDAA. It shows what tyrants and just how corrupt and ruthless they are. Can you imagine what's coming next? You notice things just get crazier and crazier now. I'm upset about that, but there's a silver lining in every cloud. This is waking people up and has really thrown the gauntlet down in everyone's face. It's time to make a decision. It's time to get involved. It's time to warn everyone you know. It's time to realize we've got a two-party dictatorship engaged in insider trading and every other form of corruption you can imagine who think that they're going to be able to not only continue this corruption, but expand it. That's the thing about corrupt governments. They get more corrupt or you bring them to justice. They get more emboldened. And then when they've gone so far that the public wakes up, they always try to come in and clamp down the public. And they've always got excuses. Foreign enemies, domestic terrorists. It's happened over and over again. Incredible despotism has come to every nation in history. And now it's coming here. We know history. And so if we educate others and stand tall, we are not doomed to repeat it. So let's take this information with the NDAA and all the lies associated with it and use it as a teaching moment. And not just a moment of instruction, but a moment of awakening. It's now time for those of you out there that grovel to the establishment and go along with whatever the system does and make excuses for it to realize you are not part of the power structure. You haven't chosen to join the New World Order and so you're on the winning team. Less than one-tenth of one percent from our research is actually part of this new world order system and stands to gain from it. That's what even Rothkop, head of the Kissinger Group, wrote a few years ago in his book, Superclass, Admitting a Global Government Run by 6,000 Top Technocrats. You're not one of the technocrats that The Economist magazine pushes and promotes as our saviors, who are actually the authors and engineers of all of our problems. You are going to have your standard of living lowered. You're going to have your freedoms lowered. And just because you've served the system doesn't mean that you won't be devoured.